Hey, it's Adam with Tech Dive AV Club. We're in Vegas Pro, and we're going to talk about how to do some stylized footage today. Uh, and I'm talking heavily stylized, kind of cartoon outline uh, style footage, and some of the tips and tools that you can use to make that happen. I'll show you how I created all this and give you some tips and tricks and when you're trying to create something stylized, uh, kind of maybe where you can start your approach and um, where you can end up. First off, this top track right here is an empty track. There's nothing going on up here, so when I pull down something and you look at it in this top track, it's going to look normal. Uh, these bottom tracks, I'll explain what I did uh, and, and it, show you how I use them together in just a second, but I don't want you to get confused. Um, I want you to see uh, what's going on. So first off, I've got some stock footage here. This is some stock footage from, uh, obviously, uh, Vegas Creative Software's 365 stock footage, and uh, I just got some things of people in suits. Now, why suits? Because suits are something very interesting. Uh, they're very usually one solid color. So if you plan something out that uses a solid color, you can actually, um, it actually, you'll know kind of what a lot of your framing ends up looking like. We're going to grab the secondary color corrector, select that, grab the default, and we're going to throw it on the suit here. And um, we're going to select the effect range, we're going to select this blue, and then we're going to show mask, and we're going to see how much of this blue is selected. Now you can kind of see where this is going. Uh, if you can kind of select an entire color and you plan your shot to have people in suits or people wearing blue glasses and things like that, you can really set it up to where a shot can be well framed by the color in the shot and then if that's the case then you can grab the color and uh, you know start creating uh, kind of your cartoon outlines and things like that. Uh, so uh, first off we're going to hit show mask and we're actually going to invert the mask um, and we're also going to go to uh, this limit luminance here, we're going to turn that off because we want as much of the blue as we can grab. Limit saturation, we're going to turn that off. And then we're just trying to grab all the blue we can. So right now all the blue is highlighted. However, you can see it's very codec here uh, where there's a hard differences in the blue. We're going to fix that. Uh, and limit hue, we're going to take the hue, which is the color we're grabbing. We're going to widen the color we're grabbing until we kind of grab most of it right here. So there's a point though where when we almost have it fixed, it'll start kind of grabbing too much and destroy it. So we're going to get really close to fixed. And one thing we can do to kind of help with some of this squares and stuff we still see here is we can actually um, put some Gaussian Blur on it. So if we go to our Gaussian Blur, and we drop the Gaussian Blur on the, um, let's see, it's this one up here, the man wearing suit, and we put it before the secondary color corrector. Uh, that's important because we, we want to blur the colors before it creates the mask. Um, see, here's our blur here, versus uh, before it creates the mask, versus if we put it on the end of the chain, it'll do it after it creates the mask. So we're going to do it before it creates the mask. We want the mask to have hard lines, but we want it to, to blur a little bit. And um, maybe just kind of drop the blur. To very minuscule. Very minuscule blur. There we go. It cleans up some of the Kodak and everything, but still leaves kind of good hard lines for your uh, perception of what's going on. So the suit here does a, a great job of giving you kind of a silhouette of what's happening because uh, it's all one solid color and it kind of blocks out the frame of a person really well. App. And so let's show what a bump map does uh, in general. So let's start with like maybe a spotlight or something. Uh, drag it over here on this unaffected shot. This bump map will kind of create some artificial depth in a shot that doesn't have any artificial depth. And uh, we can create the bump height and go really high. See, so now this shot that had no depth, now it has tons of depth. Really hard black and white depth. Now it makes it really kind of gross looking, um, but that's okay. We don't have to go that high. But what we can do is kind of get some good hard outlines of some of our key figures on a shot, right? So this is not what we're doing in this shot right here, but I want you to see what it's doing to a shot in the raw before we add it to this heavily affected one. So I'm gonna add maybe an upper right hand glow to uh, this man wearing a suit here. And I'm going to put it before the color corrector secondary and after the Gaussian blur. 
And now you can see, now we have some more outlines here. We have some more bump and uh, kind of motion lines almost that really kind of help give it more of a cartoony look. Uh, and the reason why I say cartoony, I mean, we need to see kind of clear outlining of what's happening for the stylizing to actually work. Um, and you can take the bump height, you can increase the bump height to do that. You can also mess with uh, the ambient shine uh, if you want some of the background to show through. Um, you can also layer this with backgrounds and stuff. We're not going to be covering that today, uh, but that is a possibility. be easy to mask. And uh, you can deal with the intensity of the light, all sorts of things to kind of help you draw the kind of outline you're looking to draw. And so here, now you can kind of see a clear outline of a person. You can start seeing fingers. Maybe let's kind of up the bump height just a bit more. Um, but that kind of goes a long way in giving you uh, something stylized that's still able to see kind of what's going on. Let uh, you can flop it, flip flop it, white is high versus black is high. Um, and then uh, I'm going to kind of up the ambience and the bump height, see how that works here. To kind of suddenly create a very well-blocked figure uh, out of actual video with very little work. And that's the point of this kind of effect is you can do lots of stylization with tons of work, but this this goal of this kind these kinds of things is to give you something that's very stylized very quickly. So the next thing we're going to do is uh, this is a composite layer. I'm essentially turning it off right now. So I'm going to put it to source alpha. So you, this composite layer is turned off. And I'm going to uh, put it down. We'll use that in a second. I'm going to put this down on the bottom layer here. And you can see above it, uh, if I mute this track, uh, above it is an adjustment layer. So we still have the same exact thing, uh, but I put it down a layer. And I'm going to unmute the track and show you what all I've done on this muted track here is I've added a color uh, through an adjustment track. So the way you create an adjustment track is you just right click and hit insert adjustment track. I have a whole video about that. Um, but what I've done is I've done that. I've created the adjustment track and I'm having it fill up everything. So everything below it is 100% affected by this adjustment track. And we're going to go to the track effect and you can see I have chroma blend on it. And really I've just kind of messed with it to kind of get a different color out of it. And that way you don't have the stark black and white. You have more of a colorized uh, effect here, uh, which kind of gives it a little more of an abstract feel. Now let's add some texture to it. And there's different texture options. This is a crumpled paper texture I've used before. Um, but there's also film texture here, and I kind of want to show what these different textures can do to kind of help with your stylization, give it some kind of uniform feeling. So let's start with this crumpled texture. As you can see, if you play it, it just kind of rotates through pictures of different crumpled paper, kind of giving it like a hand-drawn, frame-by-frame look, uh, really lazily done or something. So uh, this one, we're going to go to composite mode on the track. So we're going to go to this hamburger menu over here on the left, composite mode, and go to multiply mask. However, different composite modes would work uh, slightly differently, and we're going to talk about that more in a second. But with the multiply mask, now you can kind of push some of those wrinkles through. And I have more about like putting in wrinkles to a video. You can get more specific about how this is done. I have a whole tutorial about that too. Uh, but we use that same wrinkles thing, and now we've kind of got something where we've got hands and uh, adjusting colors, and it's got this like really, really kind of paper drawn look. Something very visually interesting. We can do the same thing with like this dirty film background here. So. Let's give that a look. Personally, I'd like it better if it didn't have a little bit more of that smooth motion going on in the in the texture. Uh, if I just, um, if you look at the texture here, that kind of slowly pans in the background. So, uh, you know, your your texture will vary, but it does really create some striking visuals here. Um, especially would be really good for, I think, a fast-paced music video or something. Uh, we're going to talk about how to uh, kind of do these stylization effects. You can see, kind of see how they look in another scenario. Um, glasses, uh, dark shadows over the eyes really help because eyes are going to be some of the first things to disappear as you're doing this effect. So. Um, uh, eyes are also kind of important for storytelling and stuff so that would be something to consider and to worry about uh, but so with this stylized effect let's see uh, next thing 
I kind of want to swap through some of the composite modes to give you some options. You might need to kind of pick the composite mode that's best for you. Screen uh, pulls in the texture into the black, which this, you know, gives you a very different look where the highlights kind of stay the same, uh, but the black continues to change texture. Um, and maybe you could even do multiple passes where one has one texture, one has the other. So let's talk a little bit about how to do it uh, with a different scenario here. So if I scroll up, you can see this top video again. Uh, with this one right here, uh, we're going to start with that secondary color corrector, uh, but we're going to have a different result here. And I'm going to kind of show you maybe a different way this works. So secondary color corrector, we're going to grab the default, drag it on here. We're going to select color range again, uh, grab the front of his suit and then mask the color range and then uh, we're going to remove the limit of luminance and we're going to move the limit on the saturation just unchecking those boxes there and then we're going to drop down the limit hue scroll down and we're going to widen it just like the last one and I want to pull in some detail you can kind of decide what works best for you but now we can kind of get some bit of a enough lines to tell a story right we can do some of our previous tricks so let's let's um, flop let's invert the mask maybe uh, so now the the eyes would be darker let's see if we can pull the eyes back in so with this uh, smoothing a smooth mm, add a touch of smoothing maybe and then There we go, something more like that perhaps. All right, so next we're going to need to do a couple of our tricks. We're gonna to need to smooth out some of these uh, speckles here and that's the Gaussian Blur. And we're gonna grab the default Gaussian Blur and we'll just throw it on beforehand. And then, oh, let's see, that's, woo. Um, very little Gaussian Blur is needed. So there we go. You want to make the horizontal and vertical ranges match. Um, so that's without the Gaussian Blur and width. That kind of helps. Type in bump up here. We'll grab the upper right hand glow again. And you can see how it affects it. This is after. So this, the, now this is definitely its own unique look here. But we're going to put the bump map before the secondary color corrector. But after Gaussian Blur. Because um, we want it to be, we don't want it to be affected before the blur. Uh, but you can do that if you want. It's up to you. Uh, and we're going to kind of move this light around uh, and kind of find a place that gives us the lines we need to tell the story, right? So that's kind of crazy and distracting. This kind of gives you kind of a profile, right? Well, th and this gives you a little bit more of a profile. Um, this depends on where putting this light. You can do omnidirectional, but you can do spotlight too. Let's try spotlight. There we go. I feel like that pulls in a lot of his facial lines back in. Um, you can change the bump height, the ambience. The ambience will kind of take away some of that noise. The focus, pull it in a little bit to where it only affects less of the screen. The intensity, how much shadow you're actually going to get. You can you can mess with these and kind of get the picture you want. But here again, we have a high, highly stylized picture that kind of frames somebody. You can see the framing of the people and you can actually see um, some of the depth lines going into it. So now we can put this on the bottom here with our same, uh, same things done to it. So now it's yellow and now it's got the effect onto it. And you can see how it becomes visually interesting very quickly. Like if this video helped you out. Subscribe if you're looking for more videos like this one. This one was more of an overview, kind of how you can use different effects and compositing tools to do unique things in Vegas. But I have lots of things, more practical things, less practical things, all sorts of fun things, all to do with Vegas creative software and the suite. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.